Hello, my name is Logan McCoy, and I'm the Vice President of Services for CCB Technology. I want to thank you for joining me on the second of four installments in looking at Microsoft's Office 365 solution. Specifically today, we're going to be looking at Microsoft's Outlook application as well as Skype for Business. First, let's turn to Outlook. Now, as you can see on your screen here, many people are probably going to be very familiar with what they see. It's Outlook 2013. It's what thousands, if not millions, of people are using every single day to help manage their email. But Microsoft has really started to build in some pretty cool features, and, and I would even say applications, into Outlook to help users be more productive and to optimize their experience that they're using every single day when they're in Outlook. So one of the first things that I want to point out is if you actually look right up here, you can see this finger pointing on this circle. And what Microsoft is realizing and what they know is that many people are beginning to have devices that they have a touch type interface. It could still be a traditional laptop, but the screen actually has the ability to use it as a touch type interface as well. And a lot of people I know are starting to utilize that if they're traveling or they're on an airplane, for example. And so all within the same Outlook application, you have the ability to go through that mouse type interface, or what I would say is that traditional type interface, what most people are using when they're using Outlook through a desktop or laptop, but to actually then convert it to a touch type interface. And so when I go ahead and I click on that, you can see what it actually does, and it's, it's enlarged a number of these icons. Again, assuming that now because you've converted to a touch, you're going to be using your fingers or your thumbs. As well, it's taken things and it's put it now on the sides because it's assuming you're going to be holding it in that way. And so right here on the side, I can choose if I want to delete an email, if I want to mark it as unread, if I want to unflag it and mark it as complete, if I want to move it to a different folder, if I want to reply, so on and so forth. And all within this, this little ability right here to choose if I want to go in between that mouse and then that touch type interface. Now, something else that Microsoft is also doing that I mentioned earlier is they're starting to build in applications within, for example, something like Outlook. And so if I go ahead and I click on this email from Amy Alberts, for example, you can see that right here I have these two little applications built within. I have something called Action Items and something called Bing Maps. Let's go with action items first. Now, the purpose or the intent behind action items is they know that when people are looking at emails, really what they're often looking for is what do I need to respond to? What do I need to actually follow up on? And so what it's actually doing within the email at this point, and it's already done, you can see, is it scanned the email and it's seen, okay, this is what I need to respond to. I need to let them know and I need to respond by the end of the week if I'm going to be able to attend this event or not, right? And what's great about this is especially if you have a lengthy worded email and you know that really they're just asking you for a couple of things, but you know need to know specifically what those are, you can use something like Action Items to drill down into that to get through those emails faster to respond what's absolutely critical, right? Now let's look at Bing Maps. You can see right within this email here, I actually have an address. And so I don't really know where that, that specific location is at. And so within Outlook, I want to find out, okay, how do I get there? And this is great if you're having to go on a client visit or you're traveling, whatever it might be, it's great to utilize this because I can actually drill right down into this and say, okay, I know right where that's at. Perfect. I'll find that. But if let's say I'm a little bit more lost and I'm, I may be new to the area or I've never visited this client before, you can actually click right there on Get Directions. And right there and then, I can get step-by-step -step directions of how to get from my location to my end destination. And so something that I know a lot of people, when they think of Outlook, they, they can become overwhelmed because email in general is just overwhelming, right? And so Microsoft is really trying to build in different features and functionality to help you manage your email from a day-to-day -day basis. One of the things that they really want to try and help you do is get a good snapshot, maybe when you first come into the office, what you have going on for the day, right? And so right here, if you click on your email address, what it's actually going to pull up is just that, a really good snapshot in a single pane of glass of what you have going on for the day. And it breaks it down by calendar, by tasks, and then even by overall messages that you have coming in. But one of the big things really is staying on top of email, right? And especially that can be a daunting thing if you've been away from the office for a couple of days or if you've just had back-to-back -back meetings, right? And so one of the things that Microsoft is actually doing is they're giving you the ability to clean up, whether it would be by a conversation, by a folder, or even potentially by subfolders. And so that way, when it means cleanup, is it's taking an email string and it's deleting all of the previous emails and saving just the last one with the entire string in it. And let's say, for example, that string kind of gets broken or gets segmented off, it will save each one as it begins to break off so that you don't miss anything. Another thing that Microsoft is also starting to do is they're starting to try and help you segment out your emails more, right? What's really the most critical emails as compared to what are things you just need to be aware of? And for the longest time, all we've really had is the inbox and your junk email. 
Well, Microsoft has now built in Clutter, and Clutter really kind of acts as that middleman in a way. Because what it's trying to do is it's trying to say, let's keep the inbox really clean so that only the most critical things come in that you need to be aware of. Let's still send things that we don't really need into junk, especially things like spam. But let's use clutter now as things of, you know, this is something I need to be aware of, something I need to follow up on, but I might not necessarily need. And a lot of times in the past, people were doing this through things like rules, right? But rules aren't necessarily dynamic. And so as people change or they leave the organization or move on to different departments, you know, you have to stay on top of those rules. And that can become quite cumbersome over time. And so what's really great about Clutter is that it, it really acts as an intelligent assistant in that way because what it does is let's say I take this email from Amy and I drag it into Clutter. Well, now what Clutter is going to begin to do is it's going to begin to say, okay, any email from this person or on this subject or whatever it might be, this can now automatically start going into the Clutter folder. And I can begin to segment that out on person, by topic, by group, whatever it might be, so that maybe emails that come from this specific person and when they relate to this topic only go into clutter, whereas everything else still can go into my inbox. So it really tries to act as that personal assistant so that it keeps your inbox clean and you're really only focusing on those things that are most critical, right? And so those are just a few of the key features and functionalities built within Outlook that Microsoft is really trying to bring to the market to help the users who are utilizing it every day stay productive and really enjoy what they're doing because it's optimizing their experience. Now let's look at Skype for Business. And you know, honestly, internally, when we installed Skype for Business a number of years ago, and at that time it was called Link, we didn't really know how we were going to be utilizing it. But we know that if we were going to be utilizing Office 365, we wanted to really figure it out for ourselves, right? And I can say it's probably been one of the most dynamic applications that's changed how we communicate, and I would say for the better as an organization. So when I ask clients, what does Skype for Business mean for you? A lot of times they say, well, I would assume really it's just... I mean, wouldn't it just be something like an instant messaging type platform? And I say, you know, at its basic level, it really is. That's really what it's used for. But it, it really takes it one step further and it also acts as a presence tool. And so you can see up here, you've got a nice little picture of me and it's got this little red circle with a, a white line through it. And really what that means is that I don't want anyone to disturb me right now. And specifically right now, of course, I'm doing a presentation, so I really don't want anything coming through. But I can manually change my availability if I want to. I can change it to this right here, which would show that I'm available or to busy or actually that I'm away right now. Now you can do that manually, but most of the time, honestly, I just have it go automatically from a changing perspective because it integrates within your Outlook calendar. So let's say right now I have this ending at 2.30. If I change it at 2.30, it will actually then change it from that little circle there with the do not disturb to available, which is a great thing to have because then I don't have to worry about changing it, right? But really taking it beyond just that basic instant messaging tool, because you can see here I've got test typed in. If I were to send that, it would send to Alicia and act as that. But the other great thing I can do right within there is I can actually right from this choose to do a video call. And so if I go ahead and click on that, what it's actually going to pull up for me here is a nice little dialog box that's going to ask me if I want to actually do the presentation within all of that. And maybe I have to close that out here because of what it looks like. So I'll pull it up here, refresh it. I know that that was going on there before. So if I go ahead and I click on this, there we go. You can actually see that I'm right here, and I can start a video call right there and then if I wanted to. Now I can also actually do a phone call if I wanted to, or I can actually choose to share out my presentation. And so all of these really enable you to communicate effectively within an organization, even if you're not within the same office. So I hope within all of this, you've really seen some of the great features and benefits that are built within Microsoft's Outlook application, as well as Skype for Business. Thank you for joining. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can give me a call actually at 800-342-4222, extension 123, or send me an email at logan.mccoy at ccbtechnology.com.